<laughs> back at grounding in YouTube. Grounding in YouTube. We're out here taking our shoes off. We got matchy shoes now. Ah! Hiking boots. Hiking boots. We got the hiking boots. So shoes off. Socks off. Socks off. And feet on the ground. <sighs> feet on the ground. Like this. <sighs> Capture the feet on the ground. Where are they? Ah! Nope. Okay, that didn't do, go very well. Feet on the ground. This could be the cover, maybe. If I could uh, get a high up and up there. Trying <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Okay, whatever. Whatever, now we start. Okay. <laughs> now we start. Today, we're gonna talk about mental toughness. Mental toughness on, on Wednesday. Grounding, and we're gonna talk about mental toughness. Cause it's a big, it's a big, uh, what is uh, problem? It's a big problem. Big problem. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, it's a big problem. Cause today's society, we're told to Avoid pain, you know, take a pill really fast. Um, like if it, if it don't, you gotta rest. Uh, don't, don't walk on it, don't do this. You know what I mean? And pain actually tells us like what to do. It tells us we're alive. It tells us like, um, like if I have a headache, I need to drink water. If um, let's say you have a hip replacement, you should be walking because it hurts and you need to start moving it. Um, Society is like society has taught us that okay we're in pain and what we gotta do is we gotta take this pain away fast right that's how everybody thinks they're uncomfortable or in pain and they will do anything whatever it takes the magic pill right to take away that pain not thinking about the fact what this magic pill or whatever it is you do um, we're talking about medication because that's really what it's about but you take that and you're not considering what is gonna happen because it's not fixing the problem. It never, just taking away the feeling doesn't fix the problem. So if you have pain, and I always ask this of people, if you are already miserable and you're already in pain, and here's the solution to fix your problem, why can you not be in pain for just a little bit longer? You already are, you're already fucking miserable. Be miserable for a little bit longer and fix the problem instead of taking the magic pill and making it even worse. And I think the best, my best thing is always, you know, people will come to me and say, oh my God, Max, I don't know how you, you have scoliosis, oh my God, and you're training like, you, you know, that's not her, like you're pushing so hard in the gym, I could not train like you, you're such a beast, right. yada, 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 or right. you have tattoos, oh yeah. my God, that probably hurts yeah. so bad. And a lot of times, if it's a woman, I don't know how many times I said that, I look at them and I said, do you have kids? Oh. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, that doesn't hurt? Right? That, that sounds fucking very painful to me. I don't have kids, but, that sounds very painful to me. Yes, and and I was like saying that like so, it's so interesting, right? Because like it, if you have a kid, you're like you really value. It. You're like I got to take care of this kid. This kid's health is my priority, mm -hmm. and it's not. And my health is not my priority anymore. Yeah. You make your health a priority, and that's why you're able to do these things. And it doesn't mean you're not in pain, right? Like you feel pain sometimes. Yeah. Like it's there, but it's not like, oh my god, I need to stop this. Your brain is doesn't like tell you to do that, right? Like you, but you've trained yourself to yeah. to, to be this way. Right? But yeah, but it's, and it's like people you will go people go through pain to create a life, so right? because it's worth it. But they can't go through pain to create their own life. And then you actually end up paying for it later as well, yeah. right? Like if you were to take that pill and not do the exercises that you did, you still would have gnarly scoliosis, right? And yeah. without rehab. So yeah. uh, give, can you tell me like a story of like a really mental toughness of like where you really had to begin and like tell your brain like, no, like mm -hmm. this is what I need to do. Like so these days, like nowadays I do mental toughness training every day somehow like okay we're sitting outside we're doing grinding today it's actually the weather is fucking beautiful i'm i'm not miserable at all <laughs> yeah but sometimes i go outside and it's freezing fucking cold like we've been outside where to the point where you can't fucking feel your limbs anymore and i would put myself in that position on purpose i would do cold plunging i would do all these things for real but i think nowadays i do it daily as a training because i know it builds me up and it makes me better and it makes me less bothered with things but way back i think my my craziest story i have a lot of them but my craziest story is obviously my arm 
I have like 300 stitches on this arm. I got my hip bone in there. I got a bunch of metal. Uh, it was, it was crazy. So I, I broke my wrist. We don't have to go into that story, but I broke my wrist. Nothing, you know, weird. A wrist fracture. A lot of people do this, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, had a very shitty doctor, like to the point where he fucked me up so bad that I didn't use my arm for 13 months. So oh what did God. I do? And the, I didn't know that he fucked me up, obviously, first. He's a doctor back in the... This is before I was against all the doctors. And this is just one of my own experiences with doctors. But obviously I trusted him because I'm like, he's a doctor. He works with this shit. He obviously knows what he's talking about because I'm the, I'm the kind of person I question things. Yeah. And I, every time I went on a checkup or a visit, which I did, I think it was every week or every two weeks or something, uh, I always questioned him because I thought certain things sounded a little weird, mm -hmm. like the way they did things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was like, I'm not a doctor. I'm not educated in this. So, I mean, you know, I guess he's right, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I go through the whole thing. And then the day they're going to take off my cast. Uh, first of all, I've had been in a full cast. Okay. And you, you know, have not used your it. arm at all. I have only broken my wrist. They put me full cast all the way up to here. I made you Which, immobile. first of all, is absolutely insane, insane. Because we know that if you're, if you're injured, you need to move and get blood flow going to yes. heal, right? So yes. that's also said. This is my f I first time ever I broke something. I fractured things, but this is the first broken thing. I didn't know. Like, I walked around this fucking thing, which, uh, for the record, also fucked up my shoulder <laughs> later on. But that's another story. Uh, so they take it off either way. And I look at my arm and I was like, this doesn't look weird. This doesn't look right. So during the whole time in cast, I had trained with these straps in the gym because I will never not go to the gym, right? Yeah. So I was trained, first of all, I trained legs every day in the beginning. Then I bought these straps and I put like straps up here and I would train shoulders and shit because I know at least that you need to move. You need to exercise and move to heal better. That part I know. That part where I didn't really enough question the whole cast, that's... <laughs> So That's what like, gave you this mental toughness? Like, okay, so you you took off the cast, right? And then yeah. they tell you, what did they say to you? What, no, what, they, were, what so did they tell looked, you to do? I have I have pictures of it on my Instagram. But, yeah. Like my, my hand was pointing to the side like this. Your hand? And I looked at it, yeah, it was pointing to the side. Oh my God. And I looked at it and I'm like, it looks very strange. And this guy, legit, this is what he says. Oh, it's been in a cast for a very long time. So it looks very really strange right now because it hasn't been used. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> He has a point, right? Right. He does have a point. Yeah, it's been like sitting inside this cast for a long ass time. Uh, so, okay, fair enough. I saw rehab. First of all, I go okay. to regular rehab, okay. which is absolute ridiculousness. I'm a professional athlete. So, obviously, I do that rehab for a while. I'm like, this is not working. Okay. So, I, what do I do? Boom, boom. I Google. Okay. okay. <laughs> rehab. So, yeah. I started doing rehab on my own also. And I was like, this needs, I need to fix this. Faster. And you were in fear at this point, right? Like, with your arm like this. Like, like, we're, I just kept like, training but every you, day. But like, even though you're in fear, so the mental toughness I want to get at for people, like, you still can go in fear. Just because you have fear yeah. doesn't mean you don't Google stuff. Or, like, re that freaks you out a little bit to look at you your arm, right? I wouldn't right? really Google shit. So but, no, no. You to do Google research uh, for, to do uh, for to do rehabs is what yeah. I'm saying, right? Like so, because I, I trained every day with straps because I couldn't use my hand, and I mean I couldn't use my hand to the point I couldn't even do this hold up the glass, yeah. Like and it never got better. And the doctor, no joke, this is what he says: it's your own fault. You haven't done enough rehab. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, is that it? I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, so what I did, I had a, a friend of mine who's a facial reconstructive doctor. He, uh, he does surgery on people that are in car accidents and yeah. their whole faces get smushed up. So I consult with him. Uh, I actually went to the doctor, grabbed my x-rays. I said, give me all my paperwork and my x-rays. And first of all, they gave me another patient's papers first. So they gave me a person with a foot fracture. So I got home and I started reading and I'm like, what? I don't, this doesn't make any sense, you know? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, wow, this is not even my paper. Okay, that's fucked up to begin with. They gave me some other person's paper. Yeah. Could probably sue them for that alone. Yeah. Um, either way, then I get my paper. I take my x-ray and I go on the internet and I'm like, healthy wrist x-ray. Yeah. And then I compare them and I'm like, hmm, this doesn't look right. This was really weird, actually. So then I talked to my friend and he was like, I don't do wrist surgeries, he said, but that is the most fucked up shit I've ever seen. So I go back to the doctor. I bring my doctor friend with me mm. in the room because yeah. I'm like, I need a witness. Yeah. Because yeah. he told Smart. me it was my fault that I didn't do enough surgery. So when I walk into the room with my doctor friend, 
oh, the whole story changed. Oh, oh my God, yeah, this is not good. She's definitely going to need surgery for this. I'm like, oh, wait a second. This is not what he said the first time. I was like, I wish I'd recorded the first call because now he doesn't want to look like an idiot next right. to this doctor, right? Right. So I was like, wow. So, okay, my journey starts trying to find a doctor in this country, United States. Nobody wants to help me. I reached out to more than 10 doctors. Nobody wanted to touch me. That's how fucked up it was. Because, because they, put, they don't want to get in trouble exactly. for the bad shit that that other asshole did. Yep. So what did I do? I fly back to Sweden. Uh, I take a plane, go straight to the emergency room. This, no joke, this is the fucking serious thing. I walk in, hi, uh, emergency room. You know, like, you usually have to wait a long time in an emergency hi. room. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I need some help. I show them my arm. This girl is like, <gasps> Wait a second, hold on. She goes get the doctor. In within like 10 minutes, I have five people in a room <laughs> looking at my arm. They're like, we have never seen anything so fucked up in our entire careers. So I get surgery immediately. And this, oh so I had God. to fly back to the United States. I'm not kidding. These doctors were calling me like every day. Where are you? Where are you? We need to book the surgery now. Yeah, like you're, we're going <laughs> to so cut it off. I got this great wrist surgeon, right? So... Um, had surgery on Christmas because it was the only day he wasn't booked and he really wanted to help me too and Aww. I was still in the medical system in Sweden so I it covered like I didn't pay for the surgery mm. uh, if I would have paid I heard just an estimate well, it would have been like because I actually had two different surgeries uh, I had the wrist surgery and then a surgery from compartment syndrome because my whole arm turned blue and they thought they were gonna amputate it this is the scariest Part of my entire life i'm laying in this bed after the surgery and my body doesn't like pain medication of any sort so they were not able to ease my pain because i don't take meds but right after surgery i will take meds because that's what they're for they can't ease my pain i go into shock because it hurts so much and the doctors come in and my whole arm it was all blue everything was blue oh my god the doctors come in and look at me and literally have over my head say i am sorry i don't know if we have time to give you anesthesia and i'm like Okay, now I'm gonna have a die. I'm gonna die right on the spot. Like this is not happening right now. Like they're gonna fucking cut me my arm without anesthesia. I'm like, ah, oh my god! I'd not I have never my forget that off. moment. I said I was, I was terrified. Yeah. We go into the surgery. Either way, they do manage to put me to sleep. They open up my whole arm, and that's why I have 300 stitches something to basically save the arm which they did very yeah. thankful for these people doctors don't always suck and there are purposes yes. for doctors yes. i've never said 100%. they don't they're not needed yes but this is what they're needed for yes this is what it's for yes. not stupidity shit okay yes. and sweden might be slightly better in the medical system but they're still they also try to sell meds so yeah like i'm not saying that it's different over there like that yes. but i had the surgery so afterwards they put me on a small cast that i could take off every day and do exercises also in Sweden, they actually told me to do exercises. Maybe not the exercises I did because they told me that I shouldn't do push-ups, which I did after four weeks. <laughs> uh, but I was training even the, I got a blood clot in my leg too because I had surgery over two full days. So I was laying still for too long, got a blood clot. Uh, so I started doing exercises in the hallway, like just like with my body and just moving. And I did it every single day, every single day, every single day, because I know you have to move. You yes. have to fucking move. So I was swinging around with my arms yes. and doing squats and yes. you know, all those things. Yes. Like at and the it moment built. I could stand up because the first couple of days I couldn't stand for the blood clot. Uh, so as soon as I could stand up, I started doing this. Yeah. And even when I was laying down, I was doing uh, the thing and you take off the cast every day and move your arm and then you put it back on. That's actually the routine. Did you feel motivated every day? Or is that where mental toughness comes in? Where you have to like even push away those. Like because like I, I, I've i asked you before. Like what do I do with some of my thoughts? And you're like think it just kind of I just, push it. Like, I don't take no for an answer. Okay. I am terrified just like other people. I'm scared. to. I was scared to death. I'm laying in this hospital. They're, they're basically telling me that they might have to cut my arm off. Yeah. Like I get it. Yeah. But what do you do? You have to gather yourself. What yeah. the fuck do you do? Because I'm going to say, during the hospital visit, at one point, I cried. Because I'm laying in the hospital and my, when my arm was blue, this is Christmas. Nobody's working on Christmas, so the doctor is just on standby call. 18 hours, I pressed the button to the nurse telling her something is wrong with my arm. And she thought I was a whiny bitch. She thought I was a whiny bitch. I'm like, I don't complain for anything. 
and then 18 hours it took for the doctor to come in and tell this nurse they even suggested I sue the hospital I didn't do it I just said fuck it I don't want to forget about this she should have made him come immediately and she didn't and in Sweden it's different you don't sue a person you sue the hospital they advised me to do it because that can never fucking happen Crazy, but yeah. it was Chris. She had apparently called the wrong phone number or something, and then she got annoyed at me because I told her she's like, "How much pain from a scale of one to 10 I'm like nine point fucking eight. Like yeah. I can't breathe anymore. That's how much it hurts. So like, eighteen hours. I was laying there counting, just trying to breathe and get through the shit. So like, I get it. Yeah. And then at one point, I started crying. I remember I started crying. Called my mom, and she couldn't even. She can't technically come to the hospital because she has EMS, which yeah. is like allergy to electricity. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Other story. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. They're not gonna come help me. My arm is blue. Yeah. Like, what the fuck do I do right now? You know, nobody's helping me. Yeah. Nobody works. Like. Yeah. And then Max gather yourself. Everything will be fine. Like. <laughs> no, that's, that's so a I didn't, great example. Before that surgery, though, I didn't use my arm for 13 months. 13 months, I went until... Because this fucking stupid doctor in the United States kept telling me that it was my fucking fault and I just needed to do more rehab and train more. So 13 months it took until I went and did that surgery. And after that surgery, I recovered fast. And because it, they properly made everything in and yeah. then I can actually start training and doing shit well and eating well and you know even during the whole time of my post surgery I ate my fucking meal prep every day okay so I just want to point out too this didn't happen overnight you have gained this mental toughness each day that you conquered something new you and the more you showed yourself you could do it the more you wanted to do it right yeah. like the more I don't mental toughness no fucking answer they tell me i'm not you can't train competitively anymore says the fuck who right like who the right. fuck are you to tell me what to do like i don't and, come tell me what the fuck and to if do. you've never thought that way you can change that right now yeah. you could you don't have to be that person that you know like for example like like you look at you're like oh i can never be that why not like just you so you, you, you totally can so you're, you're the like I, people are their own problem because yes tell your fucking stupid there's a bitch so, voice in your head yes and you need to shut that bitch voice down yeah because you can do this too so and i said maybe over to your story yeah because you have one you why well, we have a lot of stories yeah so like my mental toughness story is okay so I was in jail and I gained, I was 180 pounds when I got out. I, they was giving me a bunch of fucking meds. First of all, you got a shit show in jail to I, begin with. Oh no. my God. I got, <laughs> so that's like story for another time. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, yeah. So like, we'll, we'll just like stick to the topic of mental toughness. So I gained a lot of weight and each day, right? I'm very aware of it. I feel like a piece of shit. Like my mentalness, I mean, and not only that, I feel low in society. I now feel like I have nothing. Thing. I feel like the worst piece of shit. I feel like I'm never gonna get my life together. Like I literally am like so low. But to me, I was like, I, I can't die this way. I cannot die this way. I will not die this way. I will not die. The day I got out, the day I got out, I had nowhere to live. I'd go over to my homes and I ran. I ran every fucking day. And I don't care if it hurt. But you know why? I told myself I am so grateful I get to run because for the last eight months I've been in a fucking cell. And mm -hmm. all of those people I am running for. And you know what? Mental toughness can come from that. Girl, I was broken in there. Okay? You can be broken. It doesn't mean you're not tough. You got to pull that shit out of you. I got I got out of there and I decided. I made a Dude, decision. Talking, I'm like, yeah, preach, girl. I made a decision. <laughs> Sorry. I made a decision. <laughs> it's just like I'm... It's, because it fucking sucks. Like I made a decision. This is not going to be my life. And you know what? It is so hard because each day you got to tell yourself that it's not like, Oh, I made a decision. And now every day I wake up and I feel that way. Like it's, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, absolutely not. Like I have built my, my life to be like mental tough. Like I, so I lost that weight. Great. Now Did I you think it in jail already. Like before you got out, were you already thinking that you were going to make changes? Like it was I was telling myself that in jail like every day because you feel like shit and you know what I can compare that to most people that have New Year's resolutions that tell themselves every day that they're gonna run you know what I mean and it's just that mine was so much more magnified because I was literally in a spot where I was like oh my god like like it's just 
highlighted. So I was like, so when I got out, it was hard. I could barely breathe like when I ran around the block, but I did one block and then I did two blocks and then I did a three miles and then I started to go to the gym and then I started to get my self-esteem back. And then I started to feel good about myself. But these are steps that I have too. to take. And now I'm a WBFF pro. There is no I have, limit. There is no limit to what you can do. I mean, I was interning for the DA and like I had, I wanted to be a lawyer. Like there's, again, this is another story for a different time. So I went to the top, I went to the bottom and thought it was like shit. Then no, you can keep going. Like just because you get to the top of the mountain, guess what? There's gonna be another fucking mountain. So you better have that mental toughness. Like, right? Like just because you reach your goal, do you turn that mental toughness off? Like when you when you fixed your arm, like you were like, okay, I'm done now. It's like, do you or do you have to work at it every day? Yeah, every single day. So like rehab, that's one thing. And I do rehab for my scoliosis too, which I've had my own life. And I made a post about it the other day and people messaged, oh my God, Max, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I do rehab every week all the time. Yeah. And with rehab, I don't necessarily mean like the rehab you think after a surgery, but my re I will rehab on my own. Like my actual, re I build out my workout program to be rehab days right. where I do exercises that strengthens my injured areas, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Yes. Yes. It's just another workout, you know? Absolutely, and every day is just about being better than the day before. Yeah. Like, and even and with you too, like you work every day because you don't want to go back to 180 pounds or whatever. I don't want to go back to 180 pounds. I don't want to ever. I I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't do narcotic. I don't do any That's of that. Another fucking mental toughness. It's another work mental right there toughness. Too. And this is, but again, we work on this every day, and it and it doesn't have to be like, it's not, it it's simple, but it's it is hard, but it's simple. Right, and like not like when you do these. That, I don't even know how to say something. Like uh, th these days, I chase that shit. Yeah, I chase the hard shit because I was like, I went through all of that. What's next? Okay, what do I need to push myself with now? Because if I have overcame that shit, like I can do anything. So, do you think if that didn't happen to you, you would be where you are today? No, because I I told you too. Like when I was nineteen, I was terrified of water. So I forced myself to take a diving license. And I was so scared to the point where I told the school, I can't do it in a pool because I'm too scared and I can get out of the pool. You have to put me in the ocean where I can't escape. So yeah. I, I did, we did. And I was so scared. I swear, I thought it was gonna, my heart was gonna fucking pound out of my, go out No, I, 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 so do you think that you would be where you are today if like you when it, about what your arm like if you no. did if that ha didn't happen to your arm and you had to go through those 13 months do you think you'd be the no, same like every different? single injury i have i'm very thankful for because they've made me better and smarter and it made me understand that you can overcome anything so yeah. whenever i do get injured because it happened i had a herniated disc kit last year so when i get it i'm like <sighs> okay max let's <laughs> fix this now like i'm not gonna let that ruin my my day then you have days when it's extra rough when it's extra painful yeah. but you get fucking through breathe people stop yes. fucking breathing yes. and stop freaking tell your fucking bitchy brain again yeah to stop freaking out yes yeah and forgive yourself for being lazy in the past or whatever right like i have to forgive myself like again i it took me a, a, a long time but i wouldn't change what happened to me it made me such a strong person today i am so grateful i'm such more a humble person i realize you got to work so hard in life at anything at yeah. absolutely every single spot in our life like and and it's a daily thing just because i drink water two weeks ago it doesn't keep me dehydrated today you know that's why yeah. we're doing grounding every week i twice I, a week twice now, a week at least because Probably. again, it, my grounding today won't he help me for next month. Well, right, well like, technically won't help you tomorrow either. <laughs> yeah, tech, right. It's, so it's just, we, it's something you work on every day. And that's life. And that, that's actually pretty beautiful. I mean, we get to live. We're not yeah. just sitting down. We're, you know, so we're living. People have like, you have a goal and people think when you reach the goal, everything will be great. Right. But no, I think human beings were meant to always work for something. Mm -hmm. We're always meant to work for something. That's that's and people need to. I don't know. Society has taught us that when the end goal happens, 
we're happy. Right. But we're be tired. happy now. Be right. happy in the work. Right. If you're happy in the work, you will be happy every fucking day of your life. Right. You need to enjoy the journey. You need to enjoy the work. Yes. And that's what I said. People might look at us. Oh, but, you know, why do you have to train so hard and eat like that? Now, you already look good. Yeah, but I want to make new goals. Yes. And I say, I want to work on this area now. Yeah. Oh, but you look good as you are. I don't yeah. give a fuck what you think. Yeah. I also think I look good as I are. <laughs> but does it mean I'm not going to have new goals? No, no. Because I like new goals because it makes me work and hustle and become a better person every right. day. It doesn't mean that I'm not okay with what it is. And just bodybuilding is just one example. It's with everything, with business. What are you going to... Okay, you have your business goal. You start your business. And now the business is doing well. Are you just going to... Okay, yeah. let's drop everything. Now the business is well. We don't have to do anything. No, you always try to make the business better, right? Yeah. And so this is... Mental toughness is, is a muscle. So like literally what you're saying, you, you work this out every day. Like let's, for example, say I, I forced you to literally in a room to do nothing after a month your brain would not work as fast like you wouldn't be like ready to go like so again this is a muscle right that you work every day so if you're just sitting down kind of throwing to TikTok, like oh i'm gonna start i'm gonna start my thing tomorrow i'm gonna start working your thumb muscle you're you're only working (laughs) your thumb muscle like you know what i mean like and so even if you like i would tell clients just drive to the gym and park in the parking lot like just do that And then the next day, go in for five minutes. And the next day, and you know what they usually say? I stayed for 20 minutes and did a little workout. That's almost always what happens. And it's just, it's just getting there. You know what I mean? You just got to get yourself there. And that's where the mental toughness comes in. Because once you've decided to do it, like you're going to figure out a way to do it. Like you always say, you're going to put yourself in a spot. You force yourself to figure out a way to do it. And that's how you build your mental toughness. I, on the other hand, was sort of forced. <laughs> I got arrested, but thank God, and I built a mental fucking toughness. Yeah. So. So yeah. you have to. I mean, it doesn't have to be that extreme, but you need to put yourself mm-hmm. in difficult situations because it, it's almost like okay, let's say you climb a mountain and you fall down, right? You pro like if you you're probably able to hang for your life and like. You're going to be able to hang longer than you actually can. So I have this exercise I have my clients do hanging. And some of them say they can't do it. And I was like, imagine that you fall down a mountain and you're going to die if you don't hang there. You can probably do it. Because when you're in a tough position, you are capable of doing way more than you think. Because your brain now is like, holy shit, I'm going to die. I got to do this. Why can you not put yourself in a shitty position on a daily basis and make your fucking brain work Ooh, better. Like you become so a much. A homework. If you haven't yeah. done a, com- cl- a cold plunge, do it. That is mental toughness training yeah. as well. If you have, so let's like. If the- I had, I did a question shit on my Instagram the other day. And somebody said, oh, the cold plunge, how do you get through it? I can't do it. This person said. So mm. I answered and I said, yes, you can. That's right. Do you know that this person DM'd me yesterday and said they went and did a cold plunge? <laughs> I fucking love that. Oh my God. I'm like, see. It's all in here. You told yourself yes. you can't do that. Your body 100%. can do it. 100%. 100%. It's only your mind telling you that you can do shit. So yes. whatever it is you want to achieve in life, whatever it is you want to do, just know that you can do it. And just tell yourself that you can. Yeah. That you, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You, that you can do it. Mm-hmm. And, like, and, the, and honestly, nothing bad can happen because it it would be a different result and then you can create stuff something from that everything goes forward like when you try when you create momentum you you just keep going with the mental toughness because you're being positive and when you do that the universe works with you with your mental toughness it's not going to work against you like you're you're going with it and and yeah yeah. because everyone has to work off of their goal so technically okay so let's say that you do not want to grow any muscle for whatever reason or you know you don't want to train you like you you don't want none of that okay fine but let me ask you this though do you want to be fat do you want to have stomach aches do you want to have headaches do you want to have sleeping problems do you want to have you arthritis want do you no wanna... you don't so go fucking do it <laughs> or, or okay so you may be young right now okay like let's say 20s 30s 40s right you're eating whatever you want you're partying whatever you want again <laughs> uh I'm young. Yeah, 50s young, 60s young. Dude, I don't you can't get... fuck around with that shit. But what, okay, my yeah. point is you're going to end up paying for it later in oh, life. Yeah. 
So, right, like you feel young because our cells are young right now, and so things don't affect us as much, right? But, but they you're, do. But they're going. They we're, are affecting. I don't you. care. You we're gonna pay to, for it. We didn't get the side effects yet. We didn't get the receipt. Yep. We get the receipt at the end, mm -hmm. and it's gonna <laughs> list everything that we bought. So, if you're not willing to count the cost, don't buy it. <laughs> like you know. That's what I mean? a good one. That's a good one. We should just print. We should sell the receipts and just say yeah. Like, do you want diabetes? Heart problems, diabetes, diabetes, obesity, and then fibromyalgia. Like, oh my god, this is great. Then everyone says, oh, it's so expensive. I can't buy healthy food. I can't train. You're like, okay, the cost of being healthy eating, you know, yes. whatever is this, but the cost of all your disease. Yes. If you saw the price of that shit, guys, you would not be fucking doing that. Or how much insurance is actually. How much insurance pays? You're paying the insurance, are you not? <laughs> Are you not paying for their fucking insurance? Yeah. I know some of the fuckers have free insurance probably, but why do you want to live that way? Go fucking make your stupid money. <laughs> like, yeah. Get your shit together. Stay alive and for your kids. Says, it's too expensive. <laughs> says who? Your brain said that. So make more money. I said we're like, or you we can, live it every you, day now. You can find things. Like you like it it's because I have clients that don't have a lot of money, but they're able to go find things. Like, you know, you just have to be willing to want to go find things stuff like at different supermarkets or whatever deals um yeah like there's tons of stuff like you just have to like i mean i have two examples so i've started a business in my life where i started the shit without having and here's go sometimes you got to take out a loan or something to invest like i just bought a house and i bought the house before i had the money for the house and then i'm buying the money for the house so it's like almost do the action first because that's how you're going to get your fucking brain to take to make that shit happen. Yes. So I moved before I took out my loan. <laughs> and so now I'm in a position where I need to make shit happen. And you know what? It's awesome. And I feel strong. And every day I feel like I'm working towards something that I actually can achieve and I can see. Like, it's not just a dream. Like, oh, one day I'm gonna be this, like, I'm gonna be a million, like, like that's awesome. Yeah, I wanna say that, but right now I have a goal. Like, I have this much money right now and I could do this right here, but I had to walk those steps. And there, I mean, it, again, mental toughness. Was I scared? Yeah, yeah. Did I still walk it? Yeah, I did, yeah, I did. So we have a new goal for ourselves here now. Every month, we're gonna do something crazy and do it first and then figure it out. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I love because it. Because it works. I've yes. done it several times in my life. We're gonna cut this off yes. soon, but like what well, I wanted to leave Sweden, so I quit my job, got rid of my apartment, took a flight to the United States. I had nowhere to live, didn't have a job and no visa. But I did it first and then I figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it so many times in my life where I just do something crazy and then I figure it out after because I said everyone has their own ways to do things but I know that if I put myself in a position where it's like whoa okay I gotta fix this shit now I will fix that shit and you have to have that mindset though like don't put yourself in that position without the mindset because like yeah, that's like what, if yeah. you if you do that and then you just sit there and you're like oh like, that's not good, but you have to have yeah, the mind. you can't jump into the, into the action and then start doubting yourself. Yes. That's not going to Don't doubt. You got to jump into the action and know. So I get the mindset training first. Yes. You got to train your mind to where you are to the point where you fucking, you know you can achieve anything. And I yeah. said, people say you're fucking insane. And let them. Fuck them. Who cares? Who cares? Who the fuck cares? Who the fuck cares? Grounding, fucking grounding coffee. I love it. Grounding day. It's good cover. I put on each side like this. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a meeting call. Okay. Let's climb down the mountain. Even though okay. I have to sit here like all day, it would be great. Climb down the mountain. You want to give them a view again? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Just show them the mountain. We went to the same spot two days in a row, but it was a good one. Otherwise, it's gonna be a new spot every time. Adios, motherfucker. Adios, motherfucker. Bye.